Hello there, science friends, and welcome once again to Photoshop for the Scientist. Thanks for being here. So in today's video, we're going to be talking about something that I know basically nothing about, and that is anything to do with 3D inside Photoshop. However, in my last video, which uh, if you haven't watched it, we looked at uh, creating an animated GIF out of an MRI. Uh, I did promise that we were going to do some more with the, those MRI files, and in today's case, we're going to be turning those MRI files into a 3D composite of a human brain. Um, not my brain, but uh, somebody who was gracious enough to donate their MRI files to me. Um, and I will say right off the bat that I learned how to do this from Deke McClelland over at Lynda.com. The guy is a Photoshop wizard, uh, so credit where credit is due. But I am hoping that I can show you a few new things today um, that I don't think he covered. So first of all, we need to load these .com files. And if you weren't with me in the last video, just a little reminder that .com files are just medical imaging files. And so they're typically used uh, or at least from my understanding, or from what I've seen, uh, if you have an MRI, it spits it out as a bunch of DICOM files. So we're going to go up to scripts and say load multiple DICOM files, and I'm going to navigate to where I had my MRI files in this MRI folder, and then go with one that says use this one. I'll say OK. And so what Photoshop is going to do is take each one of these DICOM files, of which I think there are 200, and load them up into a single file with each file as an individual layer. Um, so we'll just give it a minute here to think about what it's doing. Hopefully it won't take too much longer. Cause I, okay, great. And so you can see here as we scroll down through our layers panel, we sort of start at one side and get a little more brainy as we go through and all the way to the bottom where we're at the other side. And so, to create a 3D volume out of all of these sections, uh, what we need to do is go up to Select here and say Select All Layers. And then we're going to choose 3D, and we're going to say New Mesh from Layer, and we're going to choose Volume. I don't know what this means, so I'm just going to click OK. And now Photoshop is going to work some magic to align all of these images into a 3D composite, uh, which we have right here. And you can see, surprisingly, I mean, I was surprised the first time I did this, how accurately you can see the human head right off the bat. Um, so I'm just going to undo that view change there. Um, but what I will say is that right out of the gate, it doesn't look great. It seems a little overblown for my liking. Um, but the good news is we can change that. So I'm going to go down to this button here, which is the Properties button. And we've got a few options here, which you can actually do a lot of stuff in here. Um, I will actually, while I'm at it, will also draw your attention to the 3D panel here, uh, which if you don't see, you can go to Window and choose 3D, obviously. Um, and we want to make sure Scene is selected, because if you click this other stuff, all of your property options are going to change. Um, but for now, I'm going to choose Scene. And what I want to show you is Volumetric Style, because that's going to allow us to make things uh, look a little better here. Um, so right now it's set to maximum intensity, which I'm taking that to mean each one of these pixels is kind of blown out to its maximum intensity, or its maximum value. Uh, I will say, Googling around and trying to learn this stuff, there really isn't a lot, at least from what I could see online, about uh, using 3D in Photoshop. So I'm still kind of learning as I go. But basically, normal, for some reason, didn't work. Uh, what's going on here? I want to set this to normal. There we go. Um, and that is a little dark. Uh, I can't say anything there. Um, and I'm assuming this is just bringing in the intensities, uh, the normal intensities, whereas this is kind of blowing them all out, or maximum intensity blows them all out. Alpha Blended takes the um, alpha channel information, which I believe is the opacity information from each pixel. And again, this one's a little brighter, um, but still a little dark. And just to show you transfer function, uh, what this does is basically creates a gradient mask over your pixels. Uh, so right now it's set to black to white, but you can just as easily choose, I don't know, red to green or any of these other gradients. But basically I've found just from tinkering around that I like to use alpha blended. And then I'll also take this opacity scale and crank it up to 10. Um, and so that's starting to look a little better. Uh, enhanced boundaries, I don't know, I can kind of take it or leave it. I think there's pros and cons to both. At the end of the day, uh, you kind of just want to select whatever seems to look good to you. I think for me, I'm going to leave enhance. Oh my goodness, what has happened here? I'm just going to hit undo. Okay. Uh, like I was saying, I think for my money, uh, enhanced boundaries seems to produce a pretty good image. It's pretty neat. You can see uh, 
sort of, I guess, blood vessels going up through the neck there. Man, it's cool. Anyway, sometimes this sort of like overhead light appears, and I think that's just because my computer gets confused. Um, so that may or may not appear for you. Anyways, so we've got our MRI 3D composite here looking pretty nice. Uh, what else can we do? Well, um, what I want to draw your attention to is this cross-section button. And so this is all well and good to look at, but let's say we wanted to get into the actual head to have a look at the brain. Um, you can do that by clicking cross-section. So I found all of this in here to be a little confusing, and I think earlier versions of Photoshop, at least to me, seemed a little more obvious. Uh, so with sli uh, Slice here, we've got a couple of different options, but basically to me what it appears to be is that wireframe uh, kind of is a section from back to front or front to back. Um, flat is a horizontal section, or coming down from top to bottom in the head. Gouron, Gouron, Gourand, Gourode, I don't know, whatever this word is, uh, is kind of sagittal or right to left, which I'll show you in a second. And then I just really don't know what these are. I've tinkered around and they just don't seem to do anything. Uh, I'm sure they do something, but just not for me. Uh, we'll come back to these in a second. Um, but the next thing we have here is the plane. So what this is doing is just showing you um, where your plane is coming from. So I'm first I'm going to set it back to flat. And it's set to black right now, so I'm going to change it to red so you can see. And when I do that, you can see if I rotate this, all this is doing is just showing you where the plane of section is. Um, I find I don't really ever need that, so I'm just going to uncheck it. Um, having it checked also for some reason screws up the rest of the head here, which I don't particularly care for. Um, but the most exciting thing to me in this whole cross-section uh, set of options here is this intersection button. And so when I click that, this is where things start to get cool. Because now you can start to see um, the actual brain on the inside of the head. And this is especially cool because the MRI originally, um, the DICOM files were moving from right to left. And so the fact that you can create this 3D composite and then start looking at the brain um, in different planes, I think is kind of really neat. And, and really, you never think that you'd be able to do this type of thing with Photoshop. But anyways, so we have this horizontal plane. Um, and now we can use the offset to kind of move up and down throughout the brain. So you can see all of the different, I mean, look at those eyeballs, got the sinuses there. And there's just a lot of stuff in a head. But you can move kind of throughout the brain and you can see all the different pieces. And I, I, I can just do this for ages. Uh, for some reason, for me, um, the plane isn't going all the way through the section. And I still haven't figured out why that's happening. But I'll tell you, it's annoying as hell. Um, but anyways, so we've got that offset. Um, and then we've got a few other options here, the tilt X and the tilt Z. And this is just going to let you have more control over how your plane looks. So you can see the tilt X kind of moves it like a fan. Like, ooh, ooh, ooh. OK, all right, just having a, having a little MRI fun. Tilt Z, uh, kind of the same thing, right into the face and back into the back of the head. But let's just leave it like that for now. And I'm going to reposition this head just a little bit like that because I think that looks kind of neat and so say now we've got our cross-section and we have our 3d composite looking the way we want it um, we can actually go back and treat this just like any other layer as we would in Photoshop so we can do things like add a levels uh, adjustment layer so we can maybe brighten it up a bit um, and just sort of mess around like you would normally and we can even do some kind of like a color overlay maybe that might be nice uh, Maybe not red, maybe something like a, a yellow, or maybe like something more kind of brain colored. Uh, I don't know, what color is a brain? Pinkish? I'm just going to go with that. And maybe we'll uh, overlay this on top. Oh, yeah, I mean, that's, that's looking kind of nice. Maybe screen. Nah, let's go, let's stick with, let's do a soft light. Yeah, that's nice. And then you could even go in, put another layer, and say you just wanted to point something out if you're creating a figure. I mean, we've all done this before, but we can create a little arrow here. Maybe want to point out one of these ventricles. Oops. And click OK. Move to a different layer here. So you see you can treat it just like any other layer you would inside Photoshop. And when you're done, all you need to do is say File, Export, we can just export it as a ping, and we'll say save. And if I open this up now, 
you'll see that we just have a beautiful image of our MRI with a cross section and this kind of big kind of ugly arrow which I'm realizing now doesn't look great but the point is made so anyways I'm hoping to explore some more of these 3d options because I think there's probably a lot more you can do um, but at least from what I've seen now uh, this is just like barely working <laughs> um, so I've still got some learning to do um, but in the meantime hopefully that's enough to sort of get you started um, and I guess that is it for today so before we go I will say uh, I keep forgetting to plug this but I do have a patreon feed and if you're thinking to yourself oh, I, I sure like this Photoshop for this scientist guy I wish there was a way I could do something to support him uh, well you can you can go to patreon and really if you just subscribe or pledge a dollar a video I'm really only doing a one video a month here so it's just a dollar it's not that bad but anyways if you're a student and or if you're just checking in for one video it's all good mostly I'm just happy to help anyways I guess with that I will sign off as always by saying you worked hard to sit in that MRI and get those MRI images so why not uh, have some fun bring them into Photoshop and create a 3d composite of your head all right well I guess that's it for today I will see y'all next time.